Baptiste tells the other lumberjacks of this enchanted canoe he has, and he manages to convince 700... 700? <laughs> That's a big canoe. Hello, spooky story seekers, my fellow ghosts, and Adara. Welcome to another episode with me, Kenzie, on this fine Thursday. Before I dive into what this story is called, I just want to make an announcement that I am not French whatsoever. I took French until grade 10 in high school, and that's it, so if I mispronounce something, I am sorry, but I'm going to try my best. Today, I will be telling you the story of La Chesse Galerie, or the Flying Canoe. Can it get more Canadian? It cannot. La Chesse Galerie is a legend from early French-Canadian settlers. Now this story is intercultural. This means that it's a mixture of Aboriginal legend of a flying canoe, and also European folklore. Nevertheless, this legend has been passed down between French Canadians for generations, and it's still told today. So, that is enough talking, let's get into it. The best known version of this story was published in 1892 by a journalist and folklorist named Honoré Beaugrand. Now, I have a few sources I'm basing this tale off of, so if you guys have heard anything different, feel free to leave a comment below. Our story begins in the Gatineau region of Quebec. We have a bunch of lumberjacks sitting at their lumber site, feeling pretty downhearted. Now the reason they feel this way is because it's New Year's Day and they're hundreds of miles away from their sweethearts back at home. It is said that a member of the group named Jean-Baptiste Durand made a deal with the devil in order to make his canoe fly many years ago. He tells the other lumberjacks about this canoe he has, and he manages to convince seven other men to do this 300 mile journey in order to spend New Year's Day with their loved ones. The only thing they must not do is one, speak the name of God, or two, touch any church steeples on their journey. If they make any of these mistakes, the devil can take their souls for eternity. Once all seven men piled into the canoe, he told them to repeat after him. Now this is where I'm going to grab my computer so I can actually read the excerpt and don't get anything wrong. Satan, king of the underworld, we promise to deliver our souls to you if within six hours we pronounce the name of your master and ours, the good God, and if we touch a cross on the journey. On this condition, you will transport us through the air to the place where we want to go, and you will bring us the same to the site. Akabris, Akabras, Akabram, let us travel over the mountains. The canoe rose into the air about 600 feet, and they began to paddle over the snow-covered forest. Once they finally arrive at their destination, Baptiste reminds all the men to be cautious of when they have to leave and also not to drink too much. The lumberjacks joined their loved ones and began to dance the night away. When it came time to leave the festivities, the other lumberjacks found Baptiste completely wasted. He drank way too much, complete opposite of what he told them to do. Despite all that, the men had to get home, so they piled into the canoe with Baptiste, and it became very apparent very quickly that he was not capable of steering the canoe at all. Don't drink and drive, everybody. Baptiste nearly misses a church steeple and crashes the canoe right into a snowbank. Now, he gets up in a drunken rage and starts screaming and cursing, and all the other lumberjacks are so terrified that he's going to scream the Lord's name and the devil is going to come take their souls. So they gag and bound Baptiste, choose a new guy to steer the canoe, and they continue on their voyage. Baptiste is somehow able to release his gag and his bounds and get up and start swearing again, and the men get so terrified that they smash right into a pine tree. Now this story ends with different variations. In Beaugrand's version, the men are actually saved and they are told by their comrades that they were found unconscious underneath a pine tree. Now other versions aren't so forgiving. They say that the men actually never returned and are doomed to fly to hell every New Year's Eve. 
Today, it is said among many French Canadians that if you hear a weird sound up in the sky on New Year's Eve, look out for La Chesse Gallery. It could be flying to hell with a bunch of terrified lumberjacks on board. Now, I will end my story with an excerpt from Beaugrand's book. It is a statement from one of the lumberjacks named Joe. All I can say, my friends, is that it is not so amusing as some people might think. To travel in midair, in the dead of winter, under the guidance of Beelzebub, running La Chesse Gallery, especially if you have a drunk car to steer your bark canoe. Take my advice and don't listen to anyone who would try to rope you in for such a trip. Wait until summer before you go to see your sweethearts, for it is better to run all the rapids of the Ottawa and the St. Lawrence on a raft than to travel in partnership with Le Diable himself. And that is the end of the flying canoe. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for all our new content. Anyway, stay spooky, ghouls. I will see you next week, Adara. Kenzie out. By a journalist and folklorist named Honoré Bourguin. Oof! <laughs> that was so bad. Honoré Beaugrand. Honoré Beaugrand. Honoré Beaugrand. Um. Honoré Beaugrand. Bo. Oh, Honoré Beaugrand. 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 Honoré Beaugrand. Honoré Beaugrand. Can I say it, please? That'd be great. Love it. <laughs> <laughs>